Hey guys, so this is day two, actually video two, day three of our rabbit rescue. So if you remember from video one, uh, we found these little guys. There were four of them in a nest um, near our chicken's coop. And we, we saw them, we monitored them. So we put a little game camera to see if the parents were coming and going. And it turns out that they were not. And we waited a little bit too long because two of them actually crawled out of the nest and died. Um, so we rescued the other two and brought them in and had started feeding them. So we're on day three of feeding these guys. Um, so today we're going to teach you how to uh, feed a baby rabbit. But also we have some big news. Um, I was telling some of our friends about rescuing our rabbit. And it turns out that they also had a little nest of rabbits, of bunnies, near their house. And their dog had found them and was trying to eat them. So they were kind enough to bring their bunnies to our now bunny rescue ranch, I guess. Um, so now we have five. We are up to five rescued bunnies. They all look exactly alike, so they're a nice little family now. All right, so step one to feeding a baby wild rabbit. You need some milk. Um, this milk came from our local feed store, Farmer's Feed. It is 525 for this can. Um, now this can is good for three days. So once you open it, you have to put it in the refrigerator and it will last for three days, then you have to throw it away. These little guys are eating about four or five milliliters each per day. So you are not gonna go through this whole can but you're still gonna have to buy a new can every couple of days, every three or four days. So $5 every three or four days is kind of what it's gonna cost you to feed these dudes. Um, so you have to get some milk. The other thing is we were working last night and our brother-in-law came over to try to feed the bunnies because um, his daughters are involved with us in that process. So he tried to feed them and they wouldn't do it. They weren't having it. Number one, he wasn't very patient. And number two, he got the milk directly from the refrigerator and tried to feed it to them. I don't know about you, but I've never met an animal who serves cold milk straight out of their udder. So you have to warm it up. So get the milk, put it in your little dropper, and then put it in a plastic bag and put it in a cup of warm water. That will warm it up to about room temperature a little bit more. And then they're a lot more receptive. So at this stage, um, their eyes are still closed. Get this little guy. So their ears are starting to perk up, but their eyes are still closed. That means they're around a week old. So at this age, they are eating um, about two, some of them go up to about three milliliters per sitting, and you need to do that a couple times per day. Um, if they won't eat very good, then you have to feed them more frequently. But if they can get five milliliters per day right now, then that's okay for this age. So you put it in a little dropper, and then you just kind of have to force feed them very gently. Um, until they get used to it. These guys have had probably six feedings now, so they're getting a little more accustomed to it. But if you just put the nozzle right up there and get a little drop out, they eventually figure out what it is. And they don't, they don't really suckle as much as they try not to drown. So you slowly let it go in and then they will start swallowing it and they figure it out eventually. Just don't push too much or you will drown them. So it's kind of a get some drops out, then they'll swallow it or spit it out. They spit it out a lot. And then eventually they start going with it. We have three that eat really well and two that are very um, resistant to the process. So if you can tell this guy's starting to go down a little bit. And you have to hold them pretty pretty firm. Don't squeeze them, obviously, they're little. But if you hold them pretty firm, it, it finally, like, they, they kind of give up. They quit squirming and they, they just take the milk and don't worry about that some big stranger that they can't see is holding them. So you just have to be patient. It takes anywhere from five to ten minutes, you know, to feed them. And eventually they'll learn and they will take it a lot faster. So be patient. 
The other thing is um, we are keeping ours in this big tote that has leaves and stuff from their nest, but you want a secondary container too. So you can get one out of that, you know, where their, where their home is right now and feed them and then put them in your secondary container so you can keep track of who's already been fed and who hasn't. So just keep a little pressure on the end of the syringe plunger, making it go in. Also, if you didn't watch our first video, um, you need to make sure you're wearing gloves. These guys are very cute and they look harmless, but if you read up on wild rabbits, they carry a lot of diseases or they have the potential to. So especially if you have kids and stuff, like it's really important to make sure that you're wearing gloves. Um, you know, they're not a pet. They're not, they're not a household pet, so don't treat them like one. Um, you can go to the pet store and get some bunnies or rabbits that are pets, but for these, this is, this is simply a rescue mission. So make sure you protect yourself and um, when you're done with the gloves, you throw it away. We clean all of the utensils and everything that we're using because we don't want their little germs to cause us big problems. All right, this guy is done. He thinks he's done. He didn't eat enough, but... We're feeding them a couple times a day, so if they refuse to take as much as they should, we just let them go and try again later. So here's bunny number two. Can't tell if he was one of our originals or the other because they all look the exact same now. Come on. Come on. There you go. So you can tell this one is a lot more open to the idea of eating. <laughs> Makes it a little more enjoyable whenever they do it themselves. So I'm gonna keep feeding them. Um, we're gonna have another video later. Uh, hopefully they'll be opening their eyes in the next couple days, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, be very careful, um, both in our case and our friend who rescued them, the Ernst. Um, these nests are just right out in the middle of the yard. Both of us have, you know, a lot of acreage around that they could have built their nest, and for some reason, they put it right in the middle of you know, a fairly frequently um, trafficked area, and you could hit it with a lawnmower, you could step on it, your dogs could find it. So just be aware, you know, this time of year because little bunny nests are everywhere. They're about four inches deep with some leaves or grass over the top of them. So you could hurt them, you could step on them, you could mow over them. So be aware um, of your surroundings and look for little mouse looking creatures that are moving around in a hole in your yard and maybe you could rescue some bunnies and then you can watch our tutorial and hopefully be successful like we are hopefully going to be. We will see you guys later.